Hey everyone, it's Grandmaster Ben Feingold. <clears throat> um, I thought I'd show a game where I didn't have white and queen c2 nimzo Indian, which I guess is sort of funny. Um, in fact, this was played in the 2006 U.S. Championship. Uh, it was the last round, and this game is all about the Benjamins. I was playing Joel Benjamin, and I had the white pieces. This was played on March 11th, which is Joel's birthday. Uh, and he told me before the game he doesn't do well on his birthday. Um, conversely, I do very well on my birthday, um, but not because I play better or anything. But my birthday is usually near Labor Day. It's September 6th. And when I was a kid and a teenager, I played in the Michigan Open because a lot of state championships are on Labor Day weekend. And generally, I was one of the higher-rated players. So on my birthday, I did pretty well. Joel probably played a lot of Grandmasters on his birthday, so... So for some reason, he said he didn't play well on his birthday. Okay, so this is the last round. Uh, and uh, I'm guessing that um, he was expecting the Queen C2 Nemozo Indian since that's what I always play. And I've played it against, it against him before. So I play Bishop G5, which is my second variation. I probably play Bishop G5 in this position about 8% of the time and Queen C2 about 92% of the time. Okay, so I prepared something for Joel because he's had black in this several times and I hardly ever have white. And this is actually book normal stuff uh, in this variation. And I played knight f3. You can also play something like bishop d3 and knight e2. In this game, I decided to play knight f3 to d2, controlling the e4 square. Okay, now Joel decided to play very aggressively probably thinking he would know the opening better than I did or just trying to take advantage of the move order. He played queen a5. So I'm sacrificing a pawn, but I'm ruining his pawn structure, which is funny because usually uh, in this variation, uh, white's the one with the ruined pawn structure with the doubled c pawns. Okay, so I have to sacrifice a pawn, but that's all right. And bishop e2, I'm going to castle. And okay, that doubled pawn wasn't that great anyway. And now black's kingside is messed up. It's very unlikely he's going to castle kingside. In fact, in the Leningrad variation, uh, black often leaves his king in the center because it's all blocked up. Okay, so Joel developed a bishop, bishop f5. I castled, I'm pinning my knight. Joel played knight a6. So we both have all of our pieces out, although it's not clear where Joel's king is going. And I played e4, and Joel went back to d7, and I played rook b1, and Joel decided to defend his pawn by castling, and he can play on the king's side with the open g file, maybe play f5 at some point, and you know, he's a pawn up, and my bishop on e2 doesn't re really have a great future with these pawns in the center blocking it. So, white has good compensation for a pawn, but I wouldn't really say white's better, I'd say it's anybody's game. Okay, so I played rook b3, attacking his queen, moved back, and I played queen c1. I would like to triple on the b file if possible by playing queen b2 and rook b1. I don't want my queen and my rook on this diagonal because bishop a4 at some point would be good. Okay, and Joel played knight b4, attacking my a2 pawn again. Rook a3, queen b6, queen b2. We're going to get my rook on f1 into the game. Probably b1. Joel played king b8. This defends the a7 pawn and possibly prepares to play bishop c8 defending b7. Rook b1. f5. Normal move. Trying to get rid of his double pawns and you know get a pawn majority going in the center. And rook b3. I think when Joel played f5, he was thinking, well, Ben can't play rook b3, the normal looking move. White's threatening a3, of course. Because I'll just play bishop a4. Then rook b3 does nothing. Um, but luckily I had seen far enough ahead to realize that I could play a3 here. The idea being he has to take. And I take. And his bishop on b3 is pretty well trapped. Now again, I wouldn't say white's winning here. Although I would rather have white. I think it's harder to play black. Uh, white's pieces are going to be pretty good soon. And the bishop on b3 really doesn't have a good home. Um, it's just a question of when he's going to lose it, not if. Now, Joel made an interesting decision. He played c takes b4. Of course, he could play bishop a4 
and then I would play b5, and, you know, I would play queen a3 and rook a1 and eventually win his bishop because it's trapped. Although, this might be a better way of playing, but I think Joel wanted to win some pawns, so he took on b4, giving me the piece right away, and then took on e4. You'll notice Joel still has all eight of his pawns, uh, and I only have five. So Joel has a rook and three pawns for two pieces, and... Of course, the b4 pawn is weak, the e4 pawn is weak. Computer says it's very complicated position, but Joel wasn't feeling very confident. Well, I mean, it's sort of a joke, but it was his birthday, so he wasn't confident. And he just didn't like his position. He didn't like the way things were going. I think he underestimated a3, and then when I played it, he felt a little down about the position. Okay, so I played queen a4. I really don't want to trade queens. Because I think in the end game, black has excellent chances. In the middle game, I think I can really get it as king with my queen, my rook, and two pieces. And in general, if you want to follow a general rule, when you have a rook and several pawns for two pieces, then you want an end game. Uh, if you have the pieces, then you want a middle game. Because in the end game, the rooks are pretty good. In the middle game, the bishop and knight are pretty good. So queen a4 was a good move because I want to play rook takes b4 and then start attacking Joel's king, maybe knight b3 to a5, and so on. Okay, so Joel defended his pawn with a5. Knight b3, there's no real defense to his a pawn. So he played king c7. He was probably thinking, if I play knight takes a5, he'll play rook a8, pinning my knight. And I played rook c1, because I really want to play c5, now that his king is on c7. He played rook a8, defending his pawn. I played c5 as advertised, queen a7. Well, if he takes, I could take with the rook or the knight. I'm guessing the knight is better, threatening all kinds of discovered checks and just crashing through. Notice his rook on a8 is not really very good. I'm sorry, h8. Okay, so queen a7. And now I played queen b5, trying to inch forward and, and get it as king. He played rook to d8, and I played queen c4. Now I'm threatening to take on d6 with double check and then play queen c7 check. So, yeah, now he's losing. And, uh, well, uh, he's probably getting in time trouble too. So this is a tough position for black. King b8, getting out of the discovered double check. c6 with the obvious threat of c7 check. King c7. Yeah, actually, it's pretty hard to stop c7 check. So Joel found one of the only ways... I guess the other way is to take on c6, and I would just take back with a pawn, threatening c7 again, and, I mean, it's just hopeless. I'm just crashing through. Um, I guess I'll give a sample variation, because you guys probably like sample variations. If queen c7, which, which stops c7 check, check, and if king c8, bishop g4 check, and, and it's all over. Okay, that was a good sample variation for white. Okay, so Joel played king c7, and I took with discovered check, and now Joel resigned. Obviously, he can't let me take his rook, because then he's just down two pieces for nothing. The only way to prevent that is to play king takes b7, and then I have mate in one, because my bishop protects a6. So that was pretty good, because I got to use all of my pieces to attack his king. Even my bishop got to control some squares at the end. So after taking on, uh, taking on b7, discovered check, he resigned. Well, that game was all about the Benjamins. It was in 2006 at the U.S. Championship on Joel's birthday. It was in the last round, and it was one of my better U.S. Championships. I played a lot of good players, and if I remember correctly, which doesn't mean I do remember correctly, I think I scored plus two. I think I had uh, four wins, two losses, and three draws. Um, that's my memory anyway. I guess you guys can check and... In the comments, tell me how stupid I am. Okay, this is Grandmaster Ben Feingold. I hope you enjoyed that game. I hope you enjoy the World Chess Championship that's going on right now. And I'll be playing in a GM Norm tournament soon, starting Friday. And I'll be probably making videos about all the guys who are crushing me. Uh, I'm the oldest player by quite a bit, so I don't expect to do very well. But my fans can root for me anyway. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video and my other videos on YouTube. Bye, everyone.